Welcome. In this video, we're going to take an introduction to the Pivotal Tracker user interface and just learn a little bit about navigating around the stories. What you're seeing is a tracker project, and on the left hand side is my sidebar. From here, I can open different panels that will open in the main part of the screen. And if I close the panel, I can simply reopen it again from the sidebar. The main part of the screen is taken up by those various panels that I mentioned, and you can reorder these and configure this however you would like. Any changes that you make to the interface are only going to impact you. So experiment and really configure this so that it works the best for you. Some of the other options that you'll see, there is a menu here that lets you do things like clone a panel if you would like to see um, the panel side by side. Sometimes this can be useful so that you can look at the top and then look further down on that same list. This can also be useful for dragging things and reordering things from one location to another. Some other things that you can do from that menu is to split, if you would like, the current iteration and backlog into two separate panels. So this lets me see the current iteration of what I'm currently working on. This iteration is one panel and the backlog of future work as a separate panel if I would like to see them separately. I like seeing everything all in one long list. So if that's the case, you can simply click on that same menu and combine them again. You'll also see that Tracker has something called an ice box, and the ice box is something you can think of as your inbox for user stories. This is where stories live that we aren't committed to um, adding to the backlog. There are things that maybe we don't know for sure yet we're going to work on. So maybe there are things that are enhancement requests or things that we haven't quite decided that, yes, we are for sure going to do. Maybe they are bugs that we haven't validated or actually, in fact, new bugs. You can create new stories either in the ice box if they are, again, stories that you're not committed to working on just yet, or you can create stories directly into the current iteration backlog if there's something that um, you already know that you're committed to doing. Within that current iteration backlog, we are again seeing stories as a single list in priority order from most important to least important. So the development team knows that they should start work at the very top of the list. When one story is done, they start work on the second story. When that is done, they start work on the third and so on. Speaking of work, in the upper left hand side, you're going to see a number represented up there. That number is velocity and that number in tracker is calculated by developers putting estimates on stories. So when stories are created, they will estimate the amount of work that they think it's going to take to do that story. And that estimate is not something that we represent in time. That estimate is something we represent in story points. And story points represent the amount of complexity, the amount of uncertainty, the amount of risk that may be involved in that story. By default, story points are 0, 1, 2, or 3, but you could have selected a different scale. When I click on, let's say this story is going to be a 2, when I click on that, you'll see that now I have a start button, but Tracker will not let you start on a story until it's been estimated. If I open up the done panel, this will show the work that we have done in previous iterations. If I look at iterations one, two, and three, you'll see that I've done 11 points of work, nine points, and 10. If you average those together, 11, nine, and 10 give you an average of 10. So Tracker is planning all of my future work based on that estimate of 10. So it's giving me 10 points of work in my current iteration, iteration four, 10 points of work in iteration five, 10 points of work in iteration six, 
I have eight points of work in iteration seven because the next story would be three and that would put me over. Looking further down, it does start going um, into rough estimates. This one's at a 12 because it's so far down in the backlog that our velocity may change by that point anyway. When this current iteration ends, Tracker will move all of the done work into the done panel. Anything that perhaps didn't get finished will move down into iteration five and Tracker will recalculate. So every iteration tracker is calculating for us the amount of work that we can do in the current iteration based on our past delivery rate and what we can do in the future. Some of the other features that you may want to take note of in tracker, there is a my work up here at the top and that will show me everything that's assigned to me. So I've got a quick to do list of everything that has my name on it. Up at the top, there is a search project option, and this little question mark will bring up some of the most common search operators that I may want to take advantage of. If you click on this link here, that will bring me to the help that will give me the full uh, help article on doing searches if I want to do a complicated search. You can take these search options and you can actually copy them and paste them into the search box if you would like. So I can take this search for a review of type QA and in progress, I can copy that, click the question mark to close the search operators and paste that if I wanna search on that. Once I have my search results, if this is a search that I want to save to rerun later, I can bring up the menu options I can pin it if I want to keep this open, or I can save this search to the sidebar. So I can give this search a name, and maybe I want to call it QA reviews that are open. I can save that review. And now if I close that panel, clear my search criteria, this is now in my sidebar and I can rerun that again at any time. If you don't want that save search any longer, you can simply come up here, click that, click the little heart, and delete the save search, and it's now gone from your sidebar. But that lets you make use of search criteria, save it, reuse it over and over again. A couple other options here that you may want to take advantage of. Down here, you'll see any integrations that you may have saved. You can also see things like project history if you want to see what's gone on in this project in the past. That gives you a quick introduction to the tracker interface. I hope it's been helpful, and thanks for watching.